Jack Stuss Homestuck is a self-indulgent podcast featuring a heart player encouraging you to be self-indulgent too. Welcome home. everyone and welcome back to Jaxta's Homestuck. So as you can see from the title, this is a weird episode. It's a topic I've had on my mind for a while and I've been trying to figure out the best way to express it. Um, and so I, I decided to do this. And I think it makes sense. It's only natural, you know, that, that being a part of community and, and wanting the best for it would make me think about how to build a good and better community. So um, I, f I finally sat down and I did some research. And while this is no professional dissertation or anything, I'm hoping this series will provide some insight and tips on creating and encouraging a positive environment. Did I say series? Listen, it's a surprise to me too. This was supposed to be a one-off, but my verbosity had other ideas. So please, please stick around to the end as well. Um, because after the main part of this episode, I have a very, very important announcement that you won't want to miss or else you are going to be very, very confused. So, so please stick to the end. <laughs> okay, so let's start off with a big question. What is a good community and why is it important to have one? An article on positivepsychology.com says that a good positive community helps people feel more connected to their environment or to the media in question in our case and uh, can help build a support network and can even combat mental issues that may arise from feeling alienated such as depression and anxiety. A positive community can also give a sense of belonging, a feeling that you can be and express yourself without being judged. While this and most other articles I'll reference throughout the series are focused on real-world situations rather than online communities, a lot of this definitely rings true for both. I know I at least feel a lot more connected to Homestuck and the community surrounding it, when I have good interactions with others in the fandom, as one example. Agenda Nia interviewed a handful of people for an article about what they believe makes a good community. And while that's obviously not the most scholarly of articles, uh, three points did stick out to me, and I think at our best we have these three things. The first is that a positive community is one that is at peace with itself. While intercommunity arguments and drama will always pop up, and in a future episode I'll get into how to deal with those, the vast majority of the time we should be accepting of and in tune with each other. This is not to say that we need to be a hive mind or we can't have different opinions and disagree, but there should be an overall peaceful vibe where we don't constantly have to have our hackles raised. Secondly, a good community is a diverse community. This is something I think the Homestuck fandom is only getting better and better at. There are fans active in the community from all across the globe, of all different races, sexualities, ages, and backgrounds, and I see more and more projects celebrating these differences. This was also definitely helped by What Pumpkin continuing to hire diverse voices from the fandom. While we can still improve, we're far more diverse than the mostly cishet, white male, late millennial fanbase Homestuck started out with a decade ago, and we're showcasing more and more diversity than the almost strictly white kids and human stuck trolls we had as recently as a year or so ago. This helps make sure we all feel welcomed and valued, which leads into so many other things about what makes a community feel great. Finally, 
A community is one that openly shares its knowledge and expertise with others. The Homestuck fandom is filled with just about every kind of creator you can think of. We have traditional and digital artists, physical and 3D sculptors, authors, poets, lyricists, singers, musicians, animators, people who make music videos or analysis videos, voice actors, podcasters, programmers, and project organizers, and more. According to this note, it's a sign of a good community if we share what we know of any of those areas or other areas with others in our community. I think we do a good job of it. I see people sharing tips on how to organize a zine or, or draw troll horns, and there were panels at Stuck at Home Con or SawCon on how to make a Friendsome-esque game or promote your fan venture or make a good cosplay, just to name a few. And even when it comes to Homestuck itself and understanding it, the comic is large and it can be very hard to follow and there's a lot of lore and explanations you have to be really paying attention to in order to find and comprehend what's going on. Not only is this community great at helping people learn what's going on with the comic, there are essays and videos dedicated to the practice. To keep this community positive and welcoming, we do need to make sure we don't take on any sort of smarter than you attitude about the comic. What's obvious to you may not be obvious to others, and even bits of lore that are stated in canon aren't always accurate, and we should also avoid discouraging or looking down on those earlier on in their creative journeys. Stay humble and share your knowledge with those who want to know more. The article from PositivePsychology.com that I referenced previously also had a list of things that make a good community. First, we should allow for freedom of expression, which goes hand in hand with our vast array of creators I listed earlier. Projects of all sorts are coming out and gaining traction, and that can only mean good things for our community. It helps keep both the creators and the consumers engaged and offers new perspectives on the comic and subsequent materials, which keeps the fandom feeling fresh, new, and exciting. Secondly, we need to promote fairness. Okay, so we did a good job by having an extremely diverse fan base. Now we need to make sure we listen to and appreciate those various populations. No matter what we do, there are always going to be groups in the minority, whether minority aligns with social minorities like race or gender, or simply a minority of a type of creator or people using lesser trafficked social media sites or something along those lines. To have a positive, cohesive community, we need to recognize fans and their contributions of all types, even or especially if we have to go out of our way to do so. Now that we have freedom of expression and uplift all members of our community, we have to encourage interaction among those members and make sure that communication is positive and effective. Maybe it's obvious, but we can't have any sort of community, much less a fandom, without interactions between fans. And those interactions won't mean anything at best or could actively cause harm at worst if we're not communicating in ways that make sure not only that we're understood, but that we're understanding our conversational partner or partners. For us, our primary method of interaction is via an array of social media sites and apps. But we also have conventions, both in real life and online, thanks to SawCon, other types of meetups, and a variety of projects to contribute to and consume. I think where we hit a roadblock is in regards to effective communication, which can be difficult in small IRL groups with little to no diversity, much less a sprawling and varied community like ours. I'll get into details of how to communicate, and especially how to disagree, later on. But basically, the fandom that plays well together stays together and fosters a sense of belonging. These last traits of what makes a positive community mostly deals with community leadership, which we don't technically have. The absolute closest we have is what pumpkin staff, and while their dealings with the community definitely set an example and affect the community as a whole, this series is more for the fandom side of things than anything official. 
So for the purposes of talking about community leaders, how do I define leaders in this or other fandoms? The most general way I can is that anyone who has a platform can be considered a leader in these discussions. But that's still broad, right? You could consider anyone with a public social media account as having a platform. And while I think we should all act like leaders in our community and try to set an example for others to follow, that's not really helpful for my point. So, uh, is a platform one that's not strictly on social media, or, or do only large social media platforms count? It's tricky, and I'm not going to try to claim that I have one ultimate golden standard definition, but I'll try to parse it out as best I can. So, here are three ideas of what leaders in the community mean to me or um, I guess three different types of leaders we have in the community. So for me, one type is, is leaders can be literal leaders of projects, like the creator and organizer of a zine, and their leader status might be dependent on whether they are currently running a project or not. A leader can also be someone who regularly engages with the community as a whole or with a large subset of it, like with a podcast or certain type of YouTube channels or things like that. Yes, by this definition, I am including myself as a leader. While I recognize my listener base is relatively small, I do try to put my best foot forward and, well, lead by example. I don't always hit the mark, but I do try. Regardless, the last group that I would define as leaders of the community is also probably the most vague and contentious one. Those with a large social media following, or as we currently call them, BNFs, big name fans. Defining what that means is another ordeal entirely, so I'm going to take the lazy way out that keeps my sanity intact and just not make the attempt to draw lines in the sand of who is and is not a BNF. It seems to me that we generally have an idea of who the BNFs are in our subset of the fandom without any strict definitions anyway, so I, I think we're fine there. So who the BNFs are can change in different parts of the fandom, and some areas might not even have any recognizable BNFs. However, the effect BNFs have on the parts of the fandom they're in, or even sometimes that ripples out to other parts of the fandom, it's undeniable. And some have even been hired on as official What Pumpkin staff, which in my interpretation means that depending on how they move forward with that change can simultaneously have them occupy the status as an unofficial fandom leader and an official one, which to me seems like a precarious place to be in. But I digress. To recap, the types of leaders I personally see that we have in the Homestuck or general fandom communities are project organizers, public speakers like podcasters, YouTubers, and panelists, and big name fans or BNFs. Some of these leadership roles are conditional or in a state of flux, but in general, that's who I consider them to be. Now that we've gone through the unexpectedly lengthy task of defining fandom leadership, let's delve into how they are a part of a positive community. Leaders, whether they intend to or not, tend to set the standard of community values. Ideally, our leaders would be chosen or raised up or become leaders based off of their values aligning with the community, and those values being positive ones. But that isn't often the case, especially in fandom environments. Leaders are the face of the fandom, even just a subset of the fandom, and consciously or not, most within their sphere of influence will begin to emulate them, or at the very least, look to their behaviors as emblematic of how the community as a whole behaves and what it values. Thus, it's important that we look to and promote leaders who showcase and encourage the previously discussed traits of a positive community, and it's equally important that leaders within the fandom even those that happened into their BNF status rather than actively sought out any sort of major platform, look to ways to better ourselves and our community and set a good example. 
one way to do this, and the final trait of a positive community I'll be speaking on for now, is to maintain sensitivity toward community members by listening to and addressing concerns. For a fandom leader, this can mean accepting criticism or self-reflecting and recognizing when you're not cultivating a positive environment, proactively recognizing when one of your peers isn't doing so, and giving people who offer critiques the benefit of the doubt. Keep in mind, this is me speaking generally. There will, of course, be people who do not engage or criticize honestly or fairly, but in the vast majority of cases, community leaders and members should approach situations with an open mind and without defensiveness or hostility, as understandable as the urge is at times. But we all mess up and have room to improve, and that's fine. There are very, very few instances where a one-strike rule is appropriate for leaders or members, nor is the average leader or member forever irredeemable. A good community will help everyone grow and learn from their mistakes. So what am I saying? A good community is one in which people listen and are nice to each other? Basically, yeah. We're all in this fandom because we love Homestuck and we want to share that love with others. If we want to encourage a positive community, we need to make sure everyone feels valued and listened to, including people from a wide variety of backgrounds and perspectives, which is easier said than done. Though maybe all I've done is say things you already knew. After all, I think a lot of us have a general idea of what we want from our community of choice. So. Coming up, I plan on diving deeper into how to create a positive environment and how to deal with disagreements and parasocial relationships. But that's next time on my unexpected mini-series on positive communities. Do you have a question about building or engaging in a positive community? Send a message to my curious cat, Jaxy Axe, or join the podcast Discord and message me there. But, but, before you go, an important announcement like I mentioned earlier. As my patrons have known for a month or so, I've decided to rebrand the podcast. Instead of being called Jax Does Homestuck, I'm changing over to Live Laugh Stuck. This is something I've been planning for over a month and considering for even longer, so please understand this is something I've put a lot of thought into. I am, of course, worried this will be confusing, if not outright off-putting, for both longtime listeners and potential new listeners, and while I don't think there's a necessarily good time to rebrand a podcast that's been going on for a year, I think this is the most appropriate time. So you may now be wondering why I'm rebranding at all. Why risk confusing or losing listeners or potential listeners? Mostly, I guess, I don't think that Jax Does Homestuck is very representative of my podcast, and honestly, it isn't that great of a podcast name at all. I didn't put a whole lot of thought into it when I was first making this podcast back in January of 2018, but, I mean, then the name did actually make more sense for what I was doing at the time. Back then, as you may know, I was only reading and reviewing Homestuck, so basically my Read Stuck series, but only that. I didn't have any other type of episodes. When I restarted my podcast with a whole different direction in mind in mid-December 2018, to the point I, I wasn't planning on using Read Stuck episodes at all, it was a time I should have actually rethought the podcast name, I just... I guess I was too eager to get started that I just kept what I already had, which included my hastily made episode art and the intro and outro music, which I, I did make myself, just so you know. I'm, I'm not sure people are aware that that was mine, original. <laughs> and uh, after a few months, I did end up incorporating the Read Stuck episodes. After getting resettled into podcasting, I did start to feel that my name wasn't the best, but I also felt it was too late to rebrand. It wasn't until I was talking with some of my friends more recently that they encouraged my idea to rebrand, and so here we are. My hope is that this new name will better say what I'm about and draw more people in than it will dissuade. 
my friends and patrons have been supportive of the idea, and I trust at least some of them to tell me if I'm making an objectively terrible decision. So, I hope the change doesn't put too many of you off. I, in fact, hope most, if not all of you, like the change. I'm planning on having this go into effect around the time of my anniversary, so about mid-December, to give it time for word to spread around and for me to make a few more posts about it and, and mention it on a few more episodes, just in case someone misses one of these. So, thanks again for listening, and I will see you all next week. This podcast's theme is Dirty Dirt Kinney and was created by Domi, who can be found on SoundCloud as Domino Thief. The art for the podcast was done by Abby, who you can find on Twitter at Space Arby's. Unless it wasn't. Shout out to my patrons, Kansas Just Got Gayer and Jacob King. To become a patron and get episodes up to five days early, along with other benefits, go to patreon.com slash sociallyanxiousdragon and sign up for as little as $1 a month. You can find links to that and more in the episode's description, on the podcast's Twitter, JaxDoesHS, or on JaxDoesHomestuck.com. Please remember to rate this podcast on iTunes and share with your friends. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to be a little selfish.